UConn finally made it to Phoenix. Why Danny Hurley's leadership will be the reason they depart as champions. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Like we talked about this morning, like if a scene out of major league or planes, trains, and automobiles, UConn men's basketball team was the last to arrive at the Final Four. It feels like a small propeller plane arriving around 634 Eastern time. Looked like the NCAA thought it was the Final Three, not the Final Four. We welcome in our guest, David Shepard of CBS Radio. David, I don't know if you saw Dan Hurley's press media availability today. It was late, but he made a comment that struck me. This is the quote. You think to yourself... Once we got through the the ordeal, you don't really deserve to show entitlement. Does that c- comment surprise you from from Dan Hurley? No, not at all, Mark. And thank you for having me. The, the truth of the matter is, when it comes to Dan Hurley, he is old school personified. You know, he obviously is the brother of an absolute legend. Um, you know, Bobby Hurley Jr. And then Bobby Hurley Sr. is the ultimate legend in this sport. Right? The guy was a, a high school coach. He could have coached anywhere he wanted in the country in terms of division one. And he decided not to, um, because he's got old school values. You, you stay with the school that stood by you. And so there's going to be no entitlement. I mean, this, we're talking about an era of the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, where you didn't make, you know, you didn't make yourself because of hype. You made yourself because of your own work ethic, because of your own struggle, right? The own, uh, adversity that you were able to overcome. That's, that's, that's Hurley, man. That's Hurley to a T. Mm-hmm. So he's not gonna he's not gonna give his kids any excuse, any reason to think that they are entitled to anything. And he's always said this: they're not defending anything. They're going after another championship with some some you know holdovers from last year, Donovan, Tristan, et cetera. But there's more. But he understands that once you get complacent, once you feel entitled. That's where the motivation dwindles to some extent. So I'm not surprised at all he wasn't playing victim. And that's why, quite frankly, he didn't ask me this, but I'll tell you anyway, Mark. That's why he's the best coach in America. And it's not even close. Don't steal all my don't steal all my questions for later in this segment here, David. No, you're you're I think you're spot on. Some of the other quotes he had, and this this goes right into it. He's he talked about this on the Pat McAfee show earlier in the week. Who they call he's uh the Pat McAfee show. He Never said heard of him. he said you never heard of Pat McAfee. <laughs> Who's that? Um, no, mo- modern efficiency basketball with old school values. He's even said in the past, we have old souls. Um, so everything you're saying is it checks out. He right now, would you he's saying he's the best coach in college basketball and it's not close? Is he the face of college of men's college basketball right now? Because typically in college basketball, you go with the coaches versus the players. Is that the, is that the case here? So because of you know how easy it is to transfer and because of NIL. Um, there is not the same level of motivation I'm seeing from the star players. I- I'm sorry, but I think half of America could not even to this day, despite making the first Final Four in 44 years for the Purdue Boilermakers, half the people who watch sports still can't even tell you what Zach Eady sounds like, right? <laughs> there's no Anthony Davis. There's no Zion Williamson. There's no Kevin Durant. There's no Blake Griffin. There are no superstars right now on the men's side. Now, there, you, uh, you and I both know this. They're all on the women's side right now. And so with that being said, the fact that college basketball is so heavy when it comes to coaching stature and notoriety, because of that, now it's only amplified even more because of the lack of star power when it comes to players. So yeah, he's definitely the face of college basketball on the men's side. He's interesting. He's compelling. He's competitive. He sticks to his convictions. He's entertaining. Everyone knows Dan Hurley at this point. Now, it doesn't hurt him that he's got the last name Hurley. Because if you have followed True. basketball at all the last 35 years, that name is synonymous with greatness. No, it's it's a totally fair point to to point to his last name. And he really has stepped out of the shadows of his father and his brother at this point. Um, 
right across from him in the game that they'll be playing on Saturday is another very interesting college basketball coach, Nate Oates. Um, I got to give Alabama some due here. They're, they they came in not not exactly like NC State. They didn't come in like a firecracker. They they lost four or five games coming into this tournament. No one expected them to be there. They play another modern efficiency style basketball. What do you make of Bama and their surprise run to the Final Four? It, it, it's amazing. Um, you know, I, I look, I'm not the biggest Nate Oates fan, full disclosure. I didn't like how he, you know, there, there's one thing to have your players back, but knowing the details and knowing what Brandon Miller got himself into last year, it just seemed like he was a coach and not a leader. And mm-hmm. he wasn't a very good coach. And I'll always hold that against Nate Oates if I'm being completely honest, because I feel like there was a victim that he wasn't acknowledging at all. And I don't love the fact that Brandon Miller played right away. With that being said, it doesn't diminish the job that he did a year after having the greatest player of all time in the history of that Alabama program. No disrespect to Robert Ory or Gerald <laughs> Wallace, but Brandon Miller was without question the most talented player to ever suit up for the Crimson Tide in basketball. And it's amazing that a year removed from that, Bama gets as far as they've ever been. So it is absolutely astonishing that they have gotten that far. I will never root for Nate Oates personally. I think he completely messed up that situation last year. He cared so much more about winning and about putting fans in the seats than he did about, you know, the, the loss of an innocent life. I know I may be in the min- minority on that, but I'm never going to root for Nate Oates. Doesn't mean I'm not going to root for Alabama. I think they're a first class program. I think when you talk about sports, Alabama in college always comes to mind. Who would have thought? that the Crimson Tide in basketball would have a better shot at making a championship game than the football program. And that would be Nick Saban's last year. So everything around Alabama sports last few months has blown me away in terms of being astonished and surprised. Yeah, for sure. And and before we, before we get to the next segment, I have one name though, that I might debate you on the best player to ever be at Alabama. Didn't Antonio McDice play for Alabama? It's a pretty, pretty solid player there. Was Antonio McDice a, a top three pick? Top I don't know. As I, I, I don't know. He wasn't. I don't know the answer to that question. No, I'm telling you, he wasn't. So, yes. Did, did, was he more effective at Alabama? You can make that argument. Okay. But, Mark, was he, was he more talented to where he played just one year, wasn't even yeah. was a teenager, and was the second overall pick in the draft? We could go on another tangent and talk about that. I'm not going to debate you on it because I know you're limited time. But I will only I'll say one more thing before we leave. We move on from this, which is also a different time. You know what I mean? Like there were there weren't as many guys going that first year and one and dones in college basketball. It was it was a, it's a little more posh to do it now. Sure. Unless, I'll, your I'll cons- is, I'll, I'll, like, unless your name's Marbury, right? That's true. Or Sean Kemp. There, uh, right. So there, no. there were one and dones. Absolutely. Um, well, the UConn men aren't the only ones in the Final Four. The women are in Cleveland, ready to ma- take on the media juggernaut that is Caitlin Clark. We'll talk about that game. Coming up. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200. You can use that to bet in the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, David. So the UConn women are going for their unprecedented 12th national title to continue their record. They have 11 all time. I've been calling that the the dynasty dozen since the men have the hashtag the in the in the mix for six that the women don't have a hashtag. So I, I, I created dynasty dozen. So we'll see if that catches on. But we're sitting here on Thursday. I'm doing a crossover show with Iowa uh, tomorrow on the Lockdown Podcast Network. What? Do you see as the storyline outside of the obviously the page and page and Caitlin Clark is the main storyline that goes into this final four, in my opinion. What Without, do you see? Yeah. What do you see Gino Oriema doing to try to slow this Caitlin Clark train? Well, without question, they are absolutely the faces of this final four game. Uh, I hope he does the opposite of Kim Mulkey, which is, you know, you pick her up at half court and you double and you make somebody else beat you. You know, you, you can live with one of the others, and I don't mean to say that disrespectfully, but but they're not sure. Clark, right? They're not CC where they're putting up a whole home 35 points and 13 assists, you know, midway through the fourth quarter. You cannot let Caitlin Clark beat you. Let it be the others. And there's no other All-American on Iowa. It ain't like it's a great one-two combination. 
you cannot allow CC to beat you. Now, she's obviously a great passer. So what you have to do is you have to blitz her every time with a double. You can't make it obvious because she's going to find the open person. But you have to, you almost have to do a box in one, if you will. Um, but you have to have surprise coverages. You know, this is going to be fascinating because Gino Oriyama, as great as he is, he hasn't won in almost a decade now, which is sacrilegious when you are Gino Oriyama and you coach the UConn women's Huskies. So sure. there's a lot on the line, a lot more than just Caitlin Clark getting that uh, elusive national championship she hasn't been able to attain yet. This is this is the game. This is the game to watch. I think in on either side, in any of the final four contests, this is the one that I think people are going to be most glued to. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. I will also be doing a live. Uh, if anyone's listening to this, I'll be doing a live show after the game, a reaction whether they win or lose. Hopefully, I'm where I'm have my Yukon pom poms on and I'm not dissecting a loss. So we will we'll talk about that. But listen, David, you're you're in you're in national media. You're you're you you're on CBS radio. What do you think took so long? That's what people in Connecticut are asking. Like, what took so long for 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 ESPN, for Fox? Uh, I, I don't know how much CBS is covering them on, on a day-to-day basis, but when you turn on the the you know the big shows, right? The first takes, the you know, the undisputed, they have full-on segments. The way they would when you know men's college basketball was dominating the the landscape, but you but the people in the Constitution State are saying, we've been doing this since 1995. Where the hell have you guys been? Like so, that my question to you is, you know, Bruce Willis and Die Hard, welcome to the party, pal. Like, what where where have you guys been? <laughs> Not you specifically, but the national sure. media. It's it's a, it's a it's a very good question because when you look at even the days of USC. Back when Cheryl Miller was playing, before 1995, obviously we're talking 1980s, they were garnering audiences of 11 million people. So sure. it's, oh, it, the popularity of the women's game has always been there. Now, look, I'm not an executive producer of Undisputed or, or First Take, so I, 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 my answer is not going to be satisfactory. What I will tell you, what you know, is that you play the hits. You play the hits. And based on their research based on their intuition, based on the clicks, based on the ratings, for whatever reason, they felt like, hey, we're going to talk more Tim Tebow. We're going to talk more Tom Brady. We're going to talk Jeremy Lin. We're going to talk A-Rod. We're going to discuss LeBron. There are certain topics, buzzwords, names that are going to get more reaction. For whatever reason, they didn't feel like women's basketball at the time. It was in the same discussion as the other names I just mentioned. Now, I happen to disagree with that. Because I saw what happened in the 1990s with Rebecca Lobo in that 95 first title run of UConn, right? I saw the popularity. You saw Lisa Leslie at USC, Cheryl Swoops. There have been incredible players before Caitlin Clark. Obviously, she's getting more notoriety, more attention than any of them. I don't know if it's a a simple matter of, you know, a perfect storm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see it. Yeah. We're late. People are late to the party on this. Networks are late to the party on this. Radio stations are late to the party on this. Better late than never. So they're getting it right. But the reality is in their minds, it doesn't sell. Just like Mark, just like if you want to talk hockey, great sport. Unbelievable how deep the West is right now. Right. Unbelievable. Great run that the Rangers are on. Sidney Crosby, a name that anyone knows who follows sports. He's having a hell of a season in year in year 19, by the way. But you can't talk about that nationally because it's not going to be able to sustain itself the way that you would about the NFL, the way that you would about college football. Now, I'm giving you a very detailed, nuanced answer of why they haven't talked about it enough. They felt like, for whatever reason, women's basketball was not going to give them the same amount of clicks, the same amount of listens, the same amount of likes, subscriptions that the other topics that I mentioned. I'm glad they're finally showing up because they're getting it right finally. No, it's totally it, – it's a great answer. You know, I, I don't think you, you know, you know, got to any any less of a conclusion than anyone I've asked that to. So I appreciate that. And I, th- I think you're right. Play the hits is, is something I've heard before, and it's true. You can talk about it at concerts. You can talk about it at, uh, you know, for, for – for, you know, people people want comfort too. You know what I mean? Like there's a reason why nostalgia is a, is a, is a big thing, myself included. You know, if there's nothing on TV – you know, my we'll put it on Friends or we'll put it on uh, Suits or something that we've watched wait, wait, a million wait. times. Friends over Seinfeld? No, I've I've watched Seinfeld Seinfeld probably twelve times all the way through. Um, okay. So 
Oh yeah, don't wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Don't... Twelve times you've watched the entire series all the way through, or twelve yep. episodes. Twelve times all the way through. I am okay, a creature yeah, yeah. You of habit. You don't strike me. You strike me as a Seinfeld guy a lot more than you do Friends. I'm not taking anything away from Friends. R.I.P. Matthew Perry, man. Go yeah, no, I, but I know I. I no, it's a, it's a it, it's it's worth it. Like I don't even pit them. They're, it's it's like it's like steak in in uh, McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like Seinfeld is like a filet mignon, and Friends is like you know you're going to Wendy's to get a junior bacon cheeseburger. It's just quick little comfort food. Not not paying attention to it that much. It's in the background. You know what you I mean? Know what's, so you know what's amazing about Seinfeld, Mark, is that it's the one show I can think of where the the stars. I mean, the real fascination with those shows was the supporting cast. For sure. Because it was never about Jerry. It was always about Elaine, Kramer, and George. And then I, I would even venture to say, I think Newman was funnier than Jerry. I think, without question, Frank Costanza was funnier than Jerry, too. <laughs> that's true. It's totally See, that, fair. That's the, amazing thing about a, that's the amazing thing about a UConn podcast. As great as UConn is, and they are all time great, you can't help but bring up Seinfeld whenever you get a chance. No, I, I I don't disagree. And anytime we veer off into a, a fun topic, we have to flesh it out. I I, I have no problem with that whatsoever. By but the I way, will you, say Seinfeld would have been Seinfeld should have included UConn. They should have included UConn in one of those four seasons where UConn was dominant. Just saying. And friends had even they more time. So, you know. Listen, man, I, I I don't have a beef with Jerry. I love his comedians and cars. I'm looking forward to his new movie coming out. Uh, about pop tarts i think that that's gonna be cool i don't know if you've seen that check out the netflix uh hey, trailer what, on that if you have it what, what, what do you call um what do you call jerry seinfeld and uh uh feature film himself jerry box seinfeld office, box office poison do you think so well this is netflix so it really it's just about streaming <laughs> it's yeah, not being released it's an, old, it's an old expression i was channeling my inner norm mcdonald there um uh but dude like Stick to stick to stick to the fact that you got really lucky in the nineties. I'm not a I'm not a Jerry Seinfeld fan. You're gonna think I'm crazy. I got you. I, I'm on an island here. I get that. I think he was carried by the greatest cast ever assembled. No, I'm not knocking the guy. I understand he's funny. He's got great yeah. observational skills. I'll give you that. But he was very very lucky that his co-creator was Larry David, and he had the cast that he did. Because I'm sorry, what has he really done since, except for be you know egotistical and a snob? Well, we're gonna leave it at that because I don't want to get mad at you, David. You know what I mean? I want to. I want to keep this. I want to keep That's this fair. civil. And and also, I have Mark, to tell I'm not, you, I'm, Mark, I'm not. I'm not opinionated at all <laughs> about anything. <laughs> I I agree. I wouldn't have you on the show if I if I if you didn't want this. Um. Okay. Well, listen. Are you watching? Not you specifically, David. But are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube and the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, I'll get David's take on UConn versus Bama, and we'll dive back into UConn versus Iowa, maybe get a little into the weeds there for that double feature after this. The Fire TV Stick was my first venture into streaming as a young adult. Now Fire TV is your ultimate destination for sports, offering live games, highlights, and in-depth analysis. With Fire TV, you get the amazing viewing experience on smart TVs or simply plugging in a Fire TV Stick to your existing setup, granting access to millions of movies, TV episodes, and even free and live TV, whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament. Fire TV has you covered. Fire TV recently introduced Fire TV channels, providing a steady stream of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. This includes content for us at Locked On, as well as major pro leagues and college conferences. Fire TV channels lets you dive into the game analysis, highlights, and more, keeping you up to date on all the latest in sports world from March Madness to the NBA. David, we are going to dissect this a little more, but let's jump back to the UConn-Bama game on Saturday, the men's, the men's game. And even before we jump into that, this is such a I, I've been waiting for a national radio host to be on a show with me to ask this question. As soon as Purdue made the final four and as soon as NC State beat Duke, the very first thought that popped into my head, close your ear. I don't know why Purdue fans will be watching a UConn podcast, but if you're trying to find out some stuff about the enemy. I am absolutely here for the irony of Purdue exercising their demons, getting to the final four finally, 
where they face America's sweethearts in a double digit seed in the final four as well. How devastating of a loss would it be if Purdue loses to 11th seed at NC State? So, Mark, I'm always going to be honest with you. To me, no matter how you slice it, you get to the first Final Four in 44 years as a program where you had not only Matt Painter, but the legendary Gene Cady, and you couldn't get over the hump, and you finally do. Yes, it would be a very bitter pill to swallow, losing to a double-digit seed um, on paper, but you and I both know NC State, that's not a, that's not a double-digit seed. When you run through the ACC totally tournament it. the way they did, you beat Duke, Virginia, UNC in three straight days. That's not a double-digit seed. So, yes, it would be disappointing in the immediate aftermath of that. But the fact that you got to a Final Four is very impressive. Now, I do oh. have Purdue in that game. But, it would no, this would not be a disappointing season if they bow out in the Final Four, considering the fact that, again, they haven't been there in more than four decades. I have a very quick sidebar story, and I and since since we've done this a few times already, I have a very good friend of mine. We used to do some some when when you could go live on Twitter, I'm sure you still can. But we used to do pre and post game for some mid major basketball. Legendary HBCU head coach. He's been on the show, Cy Alexander, at South Carolina State, Tennessee State, State, and we were talking on the phone earlier today, and he said this NC State run is wild. He said Kevin Keats' his papers were being drawn. And I was driving by a, a Powerball sign that said $1.23 billion. And I said, Cy, call up your boy Kevin Keats right now. Get him to buy you a Powerball ticket because he'll win. Because this dude, not, it, not only has his team performed so well, but he is the luck of the Irish, the luck of the wolf pack, the, the law of the wolf, as they're calling it in North Carolina. It's, it's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. And they're very close to fulling, pulling a full Kemba here, winning five games in five nights and then running through the tournament. If they sure. beat Purdue, I'm more scared of NC State in the final for UConn than Purdue, just because yeah. of yeah. the magic. And, and here's the thing, Mark, like NC State, no disrespect to any of the DJs, but there's not a lottery pick here. UConn had a lottery pick, and they weren't a double-digit seed. So it's true. If, if, if NC State can pull this off, I mean, this is even greater than what they did in 1983. Now, I'm born in 87, so I wasn't around for – survive in advance you know uh first edition with the great late jim valvano but yeah I, i've never i've never seen a run like this considering they were a double digit seed in their own conference tournament yes to to totally fair that that's actually an even better point I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up um well let, i'll steer it back to yukon I, I know we're on a yukon podcast um have you thought about the 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 opportunity to have the exact same championship game, UConn NC State on both sides of the ball? Yeah, that's, it, it's amazing. It, it really speaks to the job that the UConn Athletics has done for the program, doing it in stores. Um, you know, listen, I, I'm I'm from Connecticut, and I, I can appreciate the state, but if you're a top-notch recruit, that's a tough sell. That's a, now, granted, we understand the greatness of Oriyama. And Kevin Ollie, you know, before Hurley, and, and Jim Calhoun, and the program that he essentially built. But to go to stores, man, that's a tough sell. And the fact that UConn has been able to do that so well in almost in an effortless manner, it really speaks to the greatness of, of the UConn, you know, brand. Um, because I don't see another place in the country doing that, where you know there's not all that much activity around. Yeah, honestly, the 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 comp for me is is Kansas. Um, there's not a lot going on there. I've been to that. I've been to that count that 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 conference that uh, that yeah. campus. Charlie Villanueva was on a, a podcast talking about how he visited and there was a tornado and that's why he didn't commit to Kansas. So, listen, there's no tornadoes at UConn. That's that's the that's that's the good news. I a lot of snow with with Kansas though. There's a there's a historical tie. You know, Fog Island coached there. Fog Island learned the game from James Naismith. Yeah, but you know, does it does Smith an eight learned the game from Fog Island? So, yeah, but there's an 18 year old kid from you know anywhere. I'm from Meriden, Connecticut. If I'm an 18 year old recruit from Meriden, Connecticut, and I'm the best player in the country, I don't really care about Fog Allen. <laughs> and I think that's that's no, probably. But you know who I would care about? Two guys: P squared, Paul Pierce, and yep. then Wilt Wilt the Chamberlain. You know, listen, Ray Allen's great. Karan Butler's great. Rip Hamilton's great. Kemba's great, right? But UConn's never had Wilt Chamberlain. That's true, but we've had uh, 
Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I I get it. It's all it's all a cup of tea. I'm just saying there there are places where it's happened. It and and I'm not diminishing your your response. I think I mean right. winning in stores. It's it's it's. I mean, it, it was cow country, and it still is. Um, you know, they've done some again from from Connecticut myself. So it's a uh, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing that they've done, and it's special. It's just a special place. Um, so yeah, great. these 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 two games. Last question, really, for you. What does you can answer them any way you want? Does does Bama? What does Bama do to slow down UConn? And then Nothing. once you're done with that, <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect, quick answer. But what is what is what is what is UConn? Uh, what does UConn do other than junk defense? I, we talked about that about maybe a box and one. Um, do they do they need a special performance from Page, or do they just need an all around performance from their entire team? I'm surprised Page is coming back. I'm very surprised she was so quick to say she's coming back in 2025. Because what I would have liked to have seen is the competitive fire in her saying, you know what? I'm eligible to play in the WNBA. I was the player of the year in 2021, which everyone seems to forget. I was better than CC three years ago. You know, I was better than Juju when she was in high school. I was better than Angel Reese when I was, you know, at my full apex and I was healthy. And now you see her playing like that 2021 version where she's not just Mm -hmm. scoring, but she's rebounding. And so I would have really liked to have seen Paige Becker's um, you know, just declare for the draft the same way that Caitlin did because you felt like this would be her last hurrah. And that's what Fair doesn't make me, and that's what doesn't make me feel good about this game is that okay. there's a finality to it with Iowa. And I think with, with Paige, there's room for error. And, and I, I didn't want to see that. Now, listen, I know yep. we're on a UConn podcast and it is an historically great institution, both on the women's and men's side in terms of basketball. But Mark, I am going to be floored if the UConn men's team loses and doesn't take it all and go back to back. And if Iowa doesn't at least play South Carolina in the championship game. And I hope I answered your question, but the reality is yeah, Paige is not on the same level as Clayton Clark. Otherwise, in my humble opinion, because I know Tim Duncan's like the last person to do this. When you are a top level person for the next level and you don't go to the next level, you stay. That kind of says all you need to know about where you're at from a mental perspective of your game. She's great, but Caitlin Clark's on a different level right now. Fair enough. Well, I know that you have uh, limited time, so I'm going to close out the show. Really appreciate you coming on, David. Uh, one last quick thing to let people know about Locked On. Well, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's also available on Fire, our Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports of, of the day with the local sports and local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows. Find Locked On Sports today, now and available on the free Fire TV channels app. This has been another episode of Locked On UConn. For David Shepard, I'm Mark Zanetto. Stay, stay locked in, stay connected. Make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, go Huskies.